G'day folks. Oh, I just thought I'd do a bit a bit more work on my hydronics project. I've got the condensing and uh, well, the chiller unit outside in place and a few hoses hanging off it but I've got to get a bit of hose or rigid copper pipe like this. Next time some old lengths or rolls of it come into the scrap yard I'll buy that up at scrap price and run some solid copper to this thing if I can modify it. Uh, what I really want to do is, I'll, I have to open it up first, is modify it so I've got two manifolds, sort of like the tanks on a car radiator. If you've ever seen a uh, hydronic air conditioning coil, it's got two tubes fitting off to one row of tubes, it all flows through and comes out in a separate manifold, and a, a uh, discharge manifold. That way you get volume through it. The key to hydronics isn't so much a continuous loop like a refrigeration cycle where you want the liquid refrigerant to evaporate just as it's coming out of the coil. Like you want a bit of subcooling for the compressor, that's about it. Hydronics, it's all about volume. So you want the most flow through the coil. So that's what I really want to do with this big Buffalo Trident um, cool room evaporator. It's too old and banged up to be used as a cool room evaporator. I don't, I'll probably never have the horsepower here to actually run it, like a semi-hermetic refrigeration unit or something like that. I don't have three-phase power. I'd never be able to provide enough refrigerant to this system. I mean, look at the size of that suction line. That's a one and a quarter inch suction line. No way I'd be able to supply enough refrigerant to it. So let's turn it hydronic, or at least try. As I always say, there's no harm in trying. The beat's just tearing it apart and throwing it in the steel bin. We'll keep the coil, throw the rest in the aluminium bin. These things here are defrost heaters, in case you're wondering. Big heating elements. It's got its own separate circuit, which is this one here. It's terminated inside that box. I just dried all this stuff out and I'll try the fans out to see if they still work. The run caps all hanging out. Just had to get the water out of it. It was 35 degrees this morning, or middle of the day, and it started to rain. Now it feels like bloody winter. Damn Australian weather. Alright, let's try these fans out. Not too bad. Grounded, working. Hasn't popped any fuses yet. <laughs> yeah, that one's got noisy bearing. <laughs> so does that one. They're all a bit tied. They've got some crappy old house paint on them. Yeah. Not as noisy as I was, as I was expecting. The one that came with this, I think it was made by... Oh, I can't remember who it was made by. I did a video on dismantling it. That had really loud fans. Really fast, really loud fans. This might be perfect. I mounted up in the rafter up there. Over blowing air towards the end of the shed, towards the crane. Beautiful. That's if I can convert it to hydronic. It's got to hang upside down too. There's a condensate pan, condensate outlet, and the mounting seat. No, it's doing pretty well. Oh, heat strips are reasonably easy to tear out. Got their own grounding wires each. Good to put 240 volts across them one day and see what they do. Then again, being such low wattage, I don't think they'd do much. I suppose over a long period of time, hmm, they might get quite hot. Just like that heat strip that I pulled off the uh, frost-free refrigerator coil. That came off pretty easy and intact. It's coated in aluminium too, so if it does get hot, it'll probably melt. But, yeah, some serious uh, copper in this thing. I'm not going to scrap it though. I'm thinking I'll leave this intact and just keep it as an auxiliary oil cooler or something for another project. Nice big chunky coil. 
Need some coil combs though. Get bent. Okay, now we're into the business end of it. Unfortunately it doesn't have all the inputs and outputs I was hoping it would. Uh, the last one that I scrapped, the Muller brand one, had about 8 or 10 inputs from a man or suction line outputs from a manifold and the same amount of inputs from the TX valve. This one here is different, everything's crisscrossed and looped over. Not a bad thing, I could still get a fair bit of water flow through it, but it's not optimal. Um, I'll try it anyway. Worst comes to worst, I'll scrap it and wait until I get another Muller one or another anything that I can modify. Uh, there's probably one still sitting out in the graveyard at the scrapyard at the moment. It's got no fans on it, but it's probably got a bigger manifold and more inputs on it. It's just shorter. I think it's half the length of this. But it's always worth a try before you scrap it. It's got a really old Dan Fox, Dan Foss TXV on it. I'll just undo that, cut all these lines off and try and open up these crimped ends. That's going to be the key, cutting and crimping all this out, opening it up, solder a new manifold like that onto here. So you've got one big input, one big output. Pretty straightforward. Just delete all that, solder these shut. And that'll be it. I think I'm going to have to run a litre of gasoline or something through this because that oil smells horrible bright yellow and it smells like a compressor that's been through a structural fire like it's really bad the orifice is blocked completely I can't get anything through it with the air gun the point the orifice number 03 Danfoss uh, 0.089 diameter probably millimeters 0.089 millimeter oh, it just smells like yeah burnt nasty shit. The Danfoss TEX2 R22 Bellum charge and sensing bulb charge. Yeah, I'm not going to be using that for anything. Or any of this stuff for refrigeration. That'd be bad. That oil's really, really bad. So, this whole thing needs a good flush out. The whole thing's probably full of oil. And, yeah. It's past it. Oh well. I'll chop it up and see what I can desolder. I've got to get a proper oxy torch. Those crimped ends are going to be a pain in the ass. But at least since I'm only running maybe 20 or 30 kPa of water pressure through it, I can just use lead solder if I have to. It won't hurt anything. Well that was significantly easy compared with what I thought I was having to do. Those things there are just inserts. You just jam them in the hole and solder them in, so it's only a simple matter to desolder it with a map torch. Uh, the end plate got a bit hot, which is uh, smoked a bit, but oh, that's just great. And clean that up and either silver solder or lead solder them in. Just make a new manifold like that one. I'll solder that shut, that's a liquid dump from the TX valve, that's no use. And uh, yeah try and wash it out with some crap, wash it out with some, uh, I don't know, probably petrol for starters. Petrol then a shitload of compressed air, just blow air through it. Try and get rid of that oil. I don't want oil in the hydronic system. Oh, slowly getting there. Bought a few holes in the casing and ran a new tube through. Actually soldered two pieces together with a joiner. Let's get rid of the flux residue leave that shit on there and just put, turns it into green oxide and with that there, soldered that up and it's already absorbed most of the humidity around here the thing about this flux, it's boric acid flux but as soon as it absorbs humidity it turns to water like liquid boric acid solution and it always goes green and frosty so I'm going to try and clean as much up as I can Oh, I've still got to wash this thing down with coil cleaner and take the fans off and wash everything again. Yeah. Let's try and get some of it off. It's a messy solder joint, but it works.
Well, I've already got, already got the new uh, return side done. Almost. Uh, main line's gone through. Uh, I'm just going to crimp this fitting here in a bit and finish up soldering it. There's a big gap between the two tubes. That's going to be my manifold to split the uh, return line into one or vice versa. I might have that as the input line. Uh, I'd rather have this as the input because it's got the uh, auxiliary tube in it. I could turn that into an oil cooler or whatever I want. That just runs straight through the length of it. Put it all there. That's all soldered in. Not too bad. I'm using map gas so there's a lot of excess heat and softening of the copper. But that's not bad. I can push it around and shape it to however I want. Alright. I know another elbow is going to restrict flow through that line of tubes but yeah, it's all experimental. I'll solder this one in tomorrow. Can't be bothered right now. Too damn tired. It's fairly well stuck too. There we go. Okay. Linish and grind all that oxide off. The old scotch bright pads come in handy for that sort of thing. Clean it up like that. I'm using proper silver solder for soldering, say, carbide inserts onto steel. It's 70% uh, silver. Very expensive shit, but it's a lower temperature solder than the uh, conventional HVAC stuff, which is very hard to flow with a map torch. Um, I've got a feeling there's going to be a couple little spots I've got to touch up with the, with the torch again once I do a water pressure test, but that's normal. That's what you get without an oxy torch. But that should go together quite nicely. That'll be uh, tomorrow's thing. Then I'll do a water pressure test. So for now, thanks for watching. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering why I can't be bothered, well, it's one o'clock in the morning and I start work in about 14 hours time. So, holiday's over. It's time to get back into the work sequence. Not that I really stop working, it's just different kind of work. Not hobby work. But this will be a uh, fairly soon project. It's going to get fairly hot during the next few weeks. Even though it's been a slow, cold and somewhat wet summer, we really need more air conditioning. I think this hydronic system is going to come in handy. Even if it runs on low, it'll make a nice dehumidifier.